Section 5 of Poetry of St. John of the Cross Ecstasy of Contemplation I entered, but I knew not where, and there I stood, not knowing, all science transcending. I knew not where I entered, for, when I stood within, not knowing where I was, I heard great things. What I heard, I will not tell. I was there as one who knew not, all science transcending. Of peace and devotion, the knowledge was perfect, in solitude profound. The right way was clear, but so secret was it that I stood babbling, all science transcending. I stood enraptured, in ecstasy, beside myself, and in my every sense, no sense remained. My spirit was endowed with understanding, understanding naught, all science transcending. The higher I ascended, the less I understood. It is the dark cloud illumining the night, therefore he who understands knows nothing ever all science transcending. He who really ascends so high annihilates himself, and all his previous knowledge seems ever less and less. His knowledge so increases that he knoweth nothing, all science transcending. This knowing that knows nothing is so potent in its might that the prudent in their reasoning can never defeat it. For their wisdom never reaches to the understanding that understandeth nothing, all science transcending. This sovereign wisdom is of an excellence so high that no faculty nor science can ever unto it attain. He who shall overcome himself by the knowledge which knows nothing will always rise, all science transcending. And if you would listen, this sovereign wisdom doth consist in a sense profound of the essence of God. It is an act of his compassion to leave us not understanding, all science transcending. The same subject. In an act of daring love, and not of hope abandoned, I mounted higher and higher, so that I came in sight of the prey. That I might come in sight of that prey divine, I was forced to fly so high as to be lost to sight. Yet in that act supreme I grew weaker in my flight, but my love was still so strong that I came in sight of the prey. When I ascended higher, my sight grew faint and dim, and my greatest conquest was in the darkness made. But as my love was strong, blindly forth I leapt. I mounted higher and higher, so that I came in sight of the prey. In a way most strange, I made a thousand flights in one, for the hope that is from heaven, what it hopes, attains. This was my only hope, and my hope was not in vain, for I mounted higher and higher, so that I came in sight of the prey. But the nearer I drew in this act sublime, the more lowly, base, and vile, and humiliated I grew. I said, none can reach it, and abasing myself more and more, I mounted higher and higher, so that I came in sight of the prey. End of section 5. Section 6 of Poetry of St. John of the Cross God the Supreme Good. Without support and with support, without light and in darkness living, I see myself wasting away. My soul is detached from everything created and raised above itself 
into a life delicious, of God alone supported, and therefore I will say that what I most esteem is that my soul is now without support and with support. And though I am in darkness in this mortal life, my misery is not so great. For if I have not light, I have the life celestial. For the love of that life, in the excess of its blindness, keeps the soul submissive, without light and in darkness living. Love is doing this. I have known it since, for be it ill or well with me, it makes all one joy. It transforms my soul. And so in its sweet flame, which in myself I feel, I see myself rapidly burning and wasting away. The Same Subject For all the beauty of the world, never will I lose myself, but only for that I know not, which happily is found. Sweetness of good that is finite, the utmost it can do is to pall upon the appetite and vitiate the taste. For all the sweetness in the world, never will I lose myself, but only for that I know not, which happily is found. The generous heart will never rest where it can be at ease, but only where it meets with difficulties, naught can ever satisfy it and its faith ascends so high as to taste of that I know not, which happily is found. He that is on fire with love, divinely touched of God, receives a taste so new that all his own is gone, like one who of a fever ill loathes the food before him and longs for that I know not, which happily is found. Be not at this astonished, that the taste should thus be changed. For the cause of this affection from all others differs. And so everything created is an alien to it, and it tastes that I know not, which happily is found. For when once the will has been touched of God, it never can be satisfied except in God alone. But because his beauty is such that faith alone can see it, it tastes it in I know not what, which happily is found. And now, of him enamored, tell me if you are in pain, for there is no sweetness in anything created. Alone, without force and figure, without support or rest, tasting there I know not what, which happily is found. Do not think the inner heart, which is of priceless worth, rejoices or is glad in that which here sweetness gives, but rather above all beauty raised, that is, can be, or has ever been, taste there, I know not what, which happily is found. He who seeks a greater gain will rather turn his thoughts to that he has not acquired than to that he has already. And therefore, for a greater venture, I shall always be inclined, neglecting all for that I know not, which happily is found. For all that in the way of sense I may obtain on earth, and all I may understand, however high it may be, for all grace and beauty, never will I lose myself, but only for that I know not, which happily is found. End of section 6. Section 7 of Poetry of St. John of the Cross. Song of the Soul, Rejoicing in the Knowledge of God by Faith. I know the fountain well, which flows and runs, though it be night. That everlasting fountain is a fountain hid, and where it is I know well, though it be night. Its source I know not, because it has none, but I know that therein all things begin, 
though it be night. I know that nothing can be in beauty like it, and that of it heaven and earth do drink, though it be night. I know well it is of depths unfathomable, and that none can ever sound it, though it be night. Its brightness is never dimmed, and I know that from it all light proceeds, though it be night. I know its streams are so abundant, its waters hell and heaven and earth, though it be night. The torrent that from this fountain rises, I know well, is so grand and so strong, though it be night. This everlasting fountain lies concealed in the living bread to give us life, though it be night. It calls on every creature to be filled with its waters, but in the dark, though it be night. This living fountain, for which I long, I see in this bread of life. I see it now, though it be night. End of section 7 Section 8 of Poetry of St. John of the Cross Song of Christ and the Soul A shepherd is alone and in pain deprived of all pleasure and joy. His thoughts on his shepherdess intent, and his heart is by love most cruelly torn. He weeps, not because he is wounded with love, and his distress brings him no pain, though a wound is made in his heart. But he weeps because he thinks he is forgot. His beautiful shepherdess, so does he think, has forgotten him, that thought alone makes him suffer in the land of the stranger, and his heart is by love most cruelly torn. The shepherd exclaims, Ah, wretch that I am, for I am abandoned and left. My presence is shunned by my love, and my heart for her love is most cruelly torn. At last he was raised on a tree, where he opened his beautiful arms and on it he died, his heart by love, most cruelly torn. End section 8